I want to talk about a particular kind of player that I feel that we're all familiar with, but we don't really talk about. Or rather, we do, but we only talk about an extreme version of them. You might have a special name for this type of player, but for me, they will always be Chaos Goblins. These are the type of players that are only a hair trigger away from setting off the self-destruct sequence in the bad guy's lair, rather than rescuing the hostages in the basement. These are the ones that will threaten to fight the cops because they won't let them onto the crime scene. Now this isn't to be confused with those disruptive players that do everything in their power to ruin the fun for everyone around the table for no reason except that it's a make-believe game so they can do what they like. Uh, to me, Chaos Goblins are slightly more subtle than that. Well, slightly. These are the ones that will jump straight to the extreme solution to a problem, or escalate a situation tenfold, whilst still playing along with everybody else at the table. When I started out playing TTRPGs, players like this would make me uneasy, as you would never know when they would just completely derail the entire game. Are you supposed to rein them in? Are you supposed to just tell them no the next time they come up with a hair-brained idea? These are my tips on how to deal with these chaos goblins. First things first, if you ever feel like the actions of another player is disrupting your fun or other players, it's important to talk to that player, whether you consider them a chaos goblin or not. Telling the player about their behaviour is often the most vital method of solving issues. On the one hand, if the player's actions aren't confronted, you do run the risk of this behaviour escalating as they don't believe that they're doing anything wrong or harmful to anyone else's enjoyment. And on the other hand, you bring these issues into light and you make everybody aware of the situation. Perhaps the player wasn't even aware their behaviour was disruptive, or maybe their behaviour was acceptable in another group's game. I'd like you to picture this scene. You're in the middle of running an intense moment in the game, and a chase has broken out. The player's character has escaped through a fire escape onto the rooftops, and now they're trapped. Footsteps are approaching and the sound of police sirens can be heard below, surrounding the building. What would you like to do? You ask the player. With barely a second thought, the player says, I jump off the roof. Uh, you, you, you jump off the roof? Yeah, 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 I, I just go for it. Nobody goes straight into extremes without reason. As I said, Chaos Goblins aren't usually chaotic out of maliciousness or spite. No, they usually jump straight to these conclusions for one of two reasons. Either they don't understand the situation, or they're simply doing what they think is a fun, off-the-wall solution to the challenge presented to them. When a Chaos Goblin decides to perform an action that seems completely reckless or self-sabotaging, it's completely fine to pause the game and ask, okay, why do you want to do that? This lets the player explain their choice, giving you a better understanding of the thought process behind it. If we go back to our example, when the player announces they want their character to jump off a roof, you can ask the player, okay, why do you want to jump off the roof? This invites the player to not only explain their action, but lets you understand the thought process behind the action. Perhaps they misunderstood just how high up the character was and assumed that jumping would be safe. Or perhaps they're aiming for a balcony or a conveniently placed trampoline and they just haven't told you that bit yet. Or perhaps the character is jumping off the roof because the player is completely out of ideas of how to get out of this situation and they think that the only solution is to really push their luck when it comes to the damage that they're about to receive when they hit the tarmac below. In short, Never assume the Chaos Goblin is doing a seemingly careless action because they just want to do something stupid out of boredom. As you've probably noticed, my main advice in this video revolves pretty much around understanding the player and responding to them accordingly. And you're right, but there's a good reason for this. When I just started out running games with Chaos Goblin players who tended to push every event to the absolute extreme, at the time I felt that they were deliberately sabotaging my game and I just couldn't understand why. These players were supposed to be friends of mine. If they wanted to play my game, why are they so hell-bent on derailing it? That's when it dawned on me. They weren't being disruptive, they're just playing the game the way they wanted to. The problem was me. 
I was being too protective about my game plans and I wasn't prepared for players to interact with it in a way that I hadn't intended. In a previous video, I mentioned that one of the best ways to plan a game is to create it with the focus on what your players would consider fun. Well, this is an example of that. When you write the scenes in your game, think about how the Chaos Goblin would want to interact. Is there only one way the players can achieve a certain goal? If so, maybe think about expanding upon it with different methods. So, for example, if the players need to get information out of a nobleman, perhaps think about various ways they could get that information. And maybe the nobleman will happily offer them information, but only if they beat him in a public display of strength or agility. Or perhaps they could get information through more sneakier means, such as eavesdropping on the nobleman, or maybe deceiving him to getting answers. This is a great way of not only feeling more prepared whenever the Chaos Goblin takes an alternative path, but also it rewards the player for their creativity in problem solving. The simplest tip I can offer game masters who find themselves facing a player who's about to perform an incredibly dangerous or chaotic act that could put them in even more danger is the phrase, yes, but. It's a good system. It's quick, it lays out the dangers far in advance in case the player changes their mind, and it buys you a few moments to prepare for the outcome if they go through with it. For example, can I grab the nobleman by the scuff of the neck and demand he tells me where my sister is? Yes, but this will alert his bodyguards immediately. Can I hack into the headquarters main computer and set off the self-destruct sequence? Yes, but if you succeed, you'll only have five minutes to rescue the prisoners and escape the facility alive. Can I mix all these potions in the apothecary together and try and create a super serum? Yes, but, but the constitution saving throw you'll need to make would be really high. And seeing as you don't even know what these potions are, I don't think you'll even know what they'll do to you. Give it a try the next time your Chaos Goblin throws caution to the wind. And who knows? Maybe you'll have just as much fun running a game with characters who actively defy the odds and run greater and greater risks as the game goes on. Thanks for watching.